Welcome to the Open3D Engine YouTube channel and back to our Pong series. I'm Alex Demarjan, a technical trainer with the AWS Game Tech team. In the previous tutorial, we created the rough assets such as the paddles and wall pieces that comprise our Pong game. In this tutorial, we'll further expand our input bindings and control the movement of our paddles using keyboard keys. Without delay, let's get started and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's begin by creating the keyboard input bindings that will drive the movement of our Paddle01 game entity. If your asset editor is not open, click on the asset editor icon in the toolbar at the top. Next, if your keyboard input binding is not open by default, you can open it up by selecting File Open or Open Recent in the asset editor's file menu. Next, let's add the input binding that will house the keys we'd like to use to move our paddle. Click on the plus icon next to our input event group's title. Then, for the event name, enter paddle01 underscore controls. Now we'll add two input keyboard events for our W and S key. Click on the plus symbol next to our event generators. A class to create window will appear. From the classes drop down menu, select input event map. Then click the OK button. Let's do this a second time for our second key input. Once more, click on the plus symbol next to our event generators and select input event map. Then the OK button. Expand both of the new inputs we created by clicking the arrow next to the select input. We'd like to use our keyboard as our primary input device. So in the input device dropdown menu, select keyboard. I'd also like to move our paddle vertically using the W key. So in the input name dropdown list, select the keyboard key alphanumeric W. Now we're going to repeat this process again with only one minor change. And that is for the input name, the keyboard key alphanumeric S. Before we continue to build out our movement controls, let's discuss how objects translate in 3D space. If you're comfortable with the basics of 3D movement, feel free to skip ahead in the video. Otherwise, this section will provide a basic explanation of how objects translate in 3D space. Imagine our game is set on a coordinate graph. Currently our paddles and ball assets are situated at position 0, which is represented by the horizontal line on the axis. On the right side of the screen, locate our paddles transform component. Let's adjust the translate Y value to positive 5. Notice in the perspective view, our paddle moves above our line. Conversely, if we enter the value minus 5, our paddle translates below our horizontal line. This is important because we're going to be using positive and negative values to move our paddle along various axes. Back in our level, let's take what we learned and adjust our keyboard input bindings so that when we press the W and S key, they can either apply a negative or positive value to our paddle. On the left hand side, in our asset editor, locate the event value multiplier field. The value in the field represents the amount that can be utilized when a key is pressed. In our case, let's make sure the value of our W key is set to 1, which once scripted will give the appearance that our paddle is moving up on the Y axis. Conversely, for the S key, ensure the event value multiplier field is set to minus 1. This will later be used to simulate moving our paddle downward. Now, let's connect each of our paddles to the keyboard input binding. Below our asset editor in the entity outliner, select our paddle01 entity. In the right hand side in our entity inspector, click on the add component button. In the search field, type input and select input from the drop down menu. Then within our input component, click on the select asset button. This will open our pick input bindings window. Select the keyboard input binding and click the OK button. Another way that can speed up the process of editing components is by copying and pasting them. In our Paddle01 entity, right click on the input component and select Copy Component. Then in our entity outliner, select Paddle02 and in its entity inspector, right click and select Paste Component. They will now both share the same input binding. Great. We can now create a script that will move our paddle along the Y axis. From the entity outliner, select your Paddle01 entity. Then on the right hand side of the screen, select the Add Component button and in the search field type Script. From the drop down menu, select Script Canvas. Next, let's create a new script by clicking the Open in Script Canvas Editor button located within our Script Canvas component. Here in our Script Canvas Editor, you can see we have a new Script Canvas script titled Untitled 1. Let's rename it so it's something a bit more indicative of its function. From the top down menu of the Script Canvas Editor, let's save our script by selecting File and clicking Save. Let's name our script Paddle underscore Movement. For our first node, I'd like to use one that will access the paddle entity the moment it appears or is activated in the game. So let's use the onEntityActivated node. 
On the left-hand side of the screen, in the node palette, expand the Entity section. Then, in its subsection titled Game Entity, click and drag the On Entity Activated node onto the canvas. Next, we'll use a node that allow us to access our input handler. Return to the node palette and expand the input section. Then, drag out the input handler node onto the canvas. Connect the output pin from our game entity to the input pin of our input handler. On our input handler node, we have our parameter entitled event name. For the sake of clarity, let's return to our editor and see the correlation between the event name and our node. Recall back in our asset editor, we created an event called paddle01 underscore controls that houses the input controls of our W and S keys. Back in script canvas, by copying this event name and entering it into the event name parameter in our input node, we gain access to its inputs. In this case, the W and S keys. Since I plan to reuse this script on my other paddle, it would be helpful if I had a variable that I can alter with each new event name. For the sake of clarity, you can think of a variable as a way of storing data. Thankfully, Script Canvas has an easy way of generating variables of different types. In the upper right hand corner, locate the Variable Manager. Contained within it, you'll find a Create Variable button. Let's click on it. Once selected, you'll be presented with a bunch of types of data. As mentioned earlier, variables are a way of storing data. These data types signify the type of data our variables can store. Since our event name is a bunch of text, Select string, which in essence signifies the storage of a string of characters or letters. Let's name our newly created variable event name, a fitting name for its purpose. There are times where you'll want to access the value of our variable in the editor. In a moment, we'll review why this is important. For now, let's just take a look at the process. So in the initial value source dropdown, select from component. Let's take a look at our exposed variable back in our editor. Here you can see our exposed event name variable. This makes it easy to type or copy and paste our event name without having to return to script canvas. Let's do that now. Copy the event name from your asset editor and paste it into the exposed event name variable on our script canvas component. Now back in script canvas, let's attach our event name variable to the input handler's event name parameter by dragging and dropping it in the event name's parameter field. Now that we have access to the input handler and the values being passed by the key presses of our W and S keys, Let's isolate those values so they only affect the movement of the y-axis of the paddle game object. There is an excellent node that we can use for this titled create from values. This can be found in the node palette under the math subsection vector three. Let's drag the create from values node onto the canvas. When we press and hold either the W or S keys, we'd like to call the create from values node. This can easily be done by just dragging the held output pin to the end pin of our create from values node. Once called, we want to send the key presses of the value one for W or minus one for S to the Y axis of the model. By simply dragging the value output pin into the Y axis input pin, we do this. Now that we're passing the values, the key presses to the Y axis, we want to utilize that value to actually move our paddle. The move entity node is a great node for this and can be found in the entity subsection transform. Let's drag it onto the canvas, then hook it up. Connect the out pin from the create values to the in pin of our move entity. Now connect the vector three output pin into the direction pin of our move entity. By doing this, this will inform the move entity node that the direction we want to move it in is the Y axis as indicated from the create from values node. Finally, we can annotate our collection of nodes letting other developers know what these particular nodes do. An easy way of doing this is by left clicking and dragging a marquee around all of the nodes you want annotated. Then within our paddle movement panel, right click, but not on a node to bring up the additional options menu. Select group, then from the dropdown menu, the option that best corresponds with the comment. In our particular instance, it would be input. On the right hand side of the screen in the node inspector, Look for the group name field. Let's give it a group name that is indicative of its purpose. Something simple like paddle movement. Remember to save your script and let's return to the editor and test out our script. Back in our editor, let's press the first play button in the upper right hand corner to run our game. You can see when I press the W and S keys on my keyboard, the paddle moves very quickly. Let's exit the game by pressing the escape key. A way to remedy the speed issue is by heading over to the left-hand side of the screen and adjusting the event value multiplier's values, maybe to something like 0.1 for our W key and minus 0.1 for the S key. This should significantly slow down and smooth out the movement of our paddle. 
On your own, make sure to experiment with these values to find out a movement speed that best matches the game that you want to create. Next, let's save our input binding and then press the play button again to run our game. This is really excellent. Our paddle movement is now much smoother and not as fast. Before we exit gameplay, notice that when we press our enter key, our start menu retains its original functionality of deactivating, but it doesn't really serve its original purpose of starting our game. In a future video, we're going to take a look at controlling this and other gameplay functionality with something called a state machine. But for now, let's deactivate the load automatically feature from our menu. Exit gameplay mode. And on the left hand side of our editor, select the start menu from the entity outliner. Next, on the right hand side of the screen within our entity inspector, locate the UI component asset rep and uncheck the load automatically option. Notice that when we run our game again, we no longer see our menu. Let's exit gameplay mode. Next, to save time, I'd like to reuse the script canvas component from Paddle01 and apply it to Paddle02 with a little bit of some modifications. Select Paddle01 from our entity outliner. Then on the right-hand side of the screen in the entity inspector, right-click on our script canvas component and select copy component. Next, select Paddle02 from our entity outliner. Then on the right-hand side of the screen in the entity inspector, right-click and select paste components. Notice when we run our game and press the W key, both paddles move vertically. Not a very good control structure for a two-player game. Let's generate another input event group for the movement of our second paddle. Click the plus icon in the input event group. For the event name, enter paddle02 underscore controls. Let's add two more event generators and specify that each of their classes are input event maps. Just like Paddle01, we're going to be using our keyboard to control our second paddle. So for the input device type of each of our generators, select keyboard. Now for the second paddle's upward movement, we'll be using the keyboard up arrow. So for the input name, select keyboard, key, navigation, arrow up. As you might have guessed, for our down movement, we'll be using the down arrow key. So for the input name, select keyboard, key, navigation, arrow down. I like the speed in which Paddle01 moves during gameplay. So I'm going to make sure to enter the same values for the event value multiplier fields as I did with my W and S keys. For the up arrow, enter 0.1 and for our down arrow, enter minus 0.1. Alright, so now let's save our edited keyboard input bindings and then select Paddle02 from our entity outliner. Notice on the right hand side of the screen within our Paddle02 script canvas component that our event name variable is still referencing Paddle01. The issue with this is if we try to play the game now and we press our W and S key, it'll still drive the movement of both paddles. So let's go ahead and update the event name with our new event name that we created, paddle02 underscore controls. Notice now that when I run my game, when I press the W and S keys, paddle1 now moves. And when I press the up and down arrow keys, paddle02 now moves independently of paddle1, allowing two player paddle movement. In this tutorial, we scripted some basic functionality for our paddles. In the next tutorial, we'll explore script events and how they can be used to create a simple state machine. Now, one last point before we go. O3D is an open source engine, and the O3DE community is constantly making important updates. So check back often for more O3D related content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.